That's probably good. Just enough to walk. Yep. Is there enough there? Cool. all this back together. All right, so last time we'd really talked about the Lotus was um, we had built this kind of engine or the motor cradle to house these two motors that we've got here, um, which are gonna work in sync, essentially double the power. Um, you know, we test fit it all, they fit in there. Now it's just time for a little clean up here and there. You know, there's one spot of this metal that's just, that's touching here on that bracket that I kinda wanna shave off a little bit. So that way there's, you know, some clearance. Uh, we need to figure out how to get that clutch in there. So we've got the, de the, the depth and all that, but what we had to do was use the the Citroen clutch and then the pressure plate and flywheel from a, I think like a 70s, 80s uh, Nissan transmission. And you know, the, the clutch was the same size, fit in there well, and we're gonna have that same um, depth on there to open and close that clutch. But the biggest thing was, here's a throw out bearing on the Lotus and here's the throw out bearing on that Nissan. And as you can kind of see, uh, the the, the uh, Lotus is a little bit smaller. So when we go to put it on here, there's just too much room. It, there's barely any um, contact on those clutch forks to open that clutch. So we're gonna have to either use the stock Lotus Citroen uh, throw out bearing um, to somehow get this a little bit wider to cover more of that. Or we've even thought about just doing one of those throw out bearings like you see on modern cars where it doesn't even have the, the slave cylinder here. It's just all built in here. When you, you know, hit the clutch, it expands and opens up there. So do some measuring, kind of see if we can get something with that. You know, it's always easier when you have you know, this, take out all of these extra moving pieces. It's always, it's always helpful. So that may even be a, just a better overall um, option. But back to the motors, you know, we got these two Hyperdyne motors. Uh, We've got to put this flywheel adapter on there, which will go over here on one of these um, little stubs sticking out. And, um, and essentially we got to heat this up super hot to get it on there because it's, it's made to fit perfectly. So when you heat it, it shrinks just enough, pop it on there, and uh, that'll be good to, to connect the, uh, the flywheel from that Nissan. So what are you taking that off for? This shield cracked. These things are so heavy. I um, was moving one one time and it um, hit up against. When you move it, you just got so much momentum with it. And when I turned, I hit this little plastic cover on the corner of the table. It was very sad because parts on these are not cheap and they're not easy to come by. It took, it was almost good that we were kind of taking a break on this because it took a couple, for a few weeks to, for this one little plastic piece to come in here. Might be relief cut time. Let's say you're there. Boom. <clears throat> All right, go ahead and lower it just a little bit. A little more. We still in over there? Yeah, we're still in. Okay. We'll grab the level. All right, guys, so <clears throat> kind of a big deal right here. We are doing uh, kind of the first fitment of the motors and transmission. The, um, they're officially all mated together now. We've got clearances on our uh, uh, clutch 
and you know when you turn the motor we turn the axles so <clears throat> kind of a big deal there but now we're just kind of fitting it because we've got to fabricate in some motor mounts and it's just gonna be a lot easier to put this you know the motor cradle where it's gonna be so I got my level here and from there with you know with <clears throat> the distances we have both height and width um, we'll be able to you know cardboard engineer some motor mounts that'll fit perfectly. We'll tack weld them in there once we cut them out over on the CNC machine and uh, tack them in and then pull all this back out, finish weld it all, get it looking nice, powder coat it, put it all back together, then drop it in and be done with this part. And um, so it's gonna be a lot of extra work to kind of do all this, but uh, you might see our little helper back there. Um, <clears throat> but it's worth it, you know, this kind of stuff just takes multiple times just in and out to get it exactly how you need it so Austin's gonna lower it down until we get level can you see it need a little more yeah, need a little more right there cool cool and now we have that in there so now that we've got this down in here, just for kind of helping us line things up, um, I pulled it over just a bit to kind of center it left to right as well. Um, these aren't you know, precise measurements here, but it at least gives us an idea of you know, where everything's gonna stay um, once we've got these motor mounts in. So, you know, like I mentioned, we're gonna have some uh, cardboard engineering up here from these motor mounts you've got right here up to this um, side of the uh, motor cradle and you know it'd be triangulated and just set right on there so the weight's going to be pushing up against this and just keeping it all nice and snug in there and <clears throat> kind of go back through here you can see we've got it reinforced um, with a few um, these were cut to length so that way um, the clutch went in hit all of our clearances did all that and then from there on, you know, we've got the built uh, transaxle. I know with these Citroen uh, transaxles, anybody that has a Lotus and has had one of these uh, transaxles know they've kind of been um, problematic, but we had it built reversed, um, reverse ring and pinion, which like apparently just makes these almost bulletproof with the torque, especially with, you know, electric motors and torque. Um, you don't have to know much about EVs to know how, how you know what torque is like on these. And then the um, a new uh, Quaif, uh differential, so it'll just it'll make things less jarring on the gears, and it should w withstand. At least it was guaranteed to withstand this dual motor setup. So um, you know she's in here now. I'm going to start fabricating up some pieces, but. It's really cool just to kind of see all this from front to back and how it's all fitting in here and how much room we're really going to have. Alright, so here's our cradle uh, without the uh, motors in there because they are very heavy. You may have seen in the 
uh, Instagram post this whole setup on the uh, engine hoist and you saw like the rough in motor mounts. We got the motor mounts welded in. Now we're kind of just boxing it in. And uh, I mean, the thing's pretty much ready for final fitment after we get this all welded up, clean a few welds up, powder coat. We'll be done with the motor and transmission and then moving on to the batteries, which I'll kind of show you how we're gonna do that here in a second. So I was kind of talking about the batteries, you know, the motor cradle, it's pretty much done. We know how it's gonna sit in here. Now that we've got it in here, um, we kind of got to see what area we're kind of left with. And there's actually a lot of room left after the motors. They don't take up a bunch of room, but the batteries are what take up the most room. So down here, there's a little area right here. I don't know if you can catch that or not. There's four holes. Pretty sturdy situation here because that's where the motor mounts originally. That's where we're going to mount our motors. Um, pretty good structure right there. We're going to bring kind of two arms up and then kind of, you know, triangulate engineer a little bridge right here to hold the front side of the batteries. And then the back side of the batteries, uh, you've got another, you know, strong point here, which is pretty much holds the whole back together. Um, you know, kind of the, the pushing, the pressing in. Um, Going around curves and everything so considering this is a race car there's a lot of strength right here so we're going to build some little brackets to come up here again engineer a little triangulated bridge and the whole battery pack which would be kind of like a little bit of a c shape was just going to come down and sit over everything and you know those batteries probably roughly this long you know you may get some uh get, a, get some room in here for uh, a golf bag or two and uh hit the golf course with this thing but that will be the next episode for the show your work on the Lotus, kind of how we're building the battery boxes and, and getting all that situated in here. So thanks for watching and uh, talk to you later.